It's how thing ends that's very important. It's how your life ends that's very important. <laughs> and your business the same. You may start off good in business and end up broke. It's the end that means so much. It's the end of the Bible that means so much. Amen. The Bible opens with a garden, beautiful garden, but it closes with a city, 15, 1,500 miles high, 1,500 miles square, larger than the continent of Europe, Pretty nice city. Amen. Jesus is the mayor. <laughs> and we're his alderman. Working with him in the most magnificent city man has ever been able to conceive. You say, but I haven't seen it yet. No, if you don't have faith, you won't ever see it. That's the problem. Uh, you must believe and trust in the mighty God. We began in chapter 21 last in our last lesson, uh, describing the city, uh, not, not from a person's idea of it, but uh, from what the Word of God says about it. Uh, what God says about it is a lot more important than what you think God said about it. And, and so uh, let's, let's look again at this moment and see what he has to say. We begin in verse 1, and by working real hard, uh, we got down to about verse 7. It says, The overcomers and the righteous will have a part in the new Jerusalem. The overcomers and, and the, the righteous. In verse 7 it says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Uh, I say all things. Well, that's all things. So that makes us the greatest, the greatest uh, promise in the whole Bible. Some say that there are thousands of promises in the Bible. This is number one right here. <laughs> because all things are all things. And if you're going to inherit all things, that's all things. Say all things. All things. And he says, they that overcometh. You better put a little circle around the word overcometh. Uh, that's the one that refuses to be like the world, talk like the world, go where the world goes, act like the world. Uh, they are the overcomers. They go over the top. And, and so you have to make a decision whether you want to be subject to the flesh, to the world, and to the devil, or whether you want to be an overcomer. And, and so he says, the one that overcomes puts, puts down that which is evil and raises up that which is good, then that person, it says, they shall inherit all things. Boy, you could say that the rest of your life, couldn't you? They shall inherit all things. What does the word inherit mean? It means you got it. When, when you inherit a piece of property, it's yours forever. You, you, you're free to sell it or do, or do whatever you wish to with it, build buildings on it. You have inherited that. It says that we shall inherit all things, which means we shall possess all things. That they, they're going to belong to us. You might say, I'm pretty poor now. Well, that's because you really want to be. There's no need in this country of anybody being poor. One of our members uh, decided to take me out for um, to eat last night, and uh, we couldn't get in. We went to one restaurant, they said, well, if you stand around and wait for two hours, you can have a seat. Well, brother, I'll go to McDonald's, so I'll do that now. <laughs> I'm not going to sit around anywhere for two hours. And, and, and so uh, we went to another one, and they said, no, there's a long line here. Get to the back of the line. So we left there too. We finally found one where we could at least have a seat, and and we and we could we could eat, and we would drive by these eating places in our community. They were loaded with you people. 
looted. I said, man, would I like to take up an offering here? <laughs> yeah, I tell you, this is not a poor city. Uh, you, you say, I'm poor. You just think you're poor, honey. You don't know what the word means yet. Take you to Africa and let you find out what it means. And you'd come back saying, hey, I'm rich. So uh, uh, what we'd like for you to know is this. He, he says, you shall, if you overcome, inherit, you shall own, possess all things. And then, and then, and then he says, I will be your God. Hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? Jehovah will be our God. Not, not, any, not any other creature. Not any, there are no other gods, of course, but uh, some people worship other things as if they were gods. Uh, but Jehovah, the one who created the heavens and the earth, who made the stars, who made the seas, who made the mountains, he will be our God. And he shall be my son. You shall have a legacy. The son inherits. We should be sons and daughters of the Most High God. If you're glad for it, say amen. amen. And now, that being the greatest promise in the Bible, put a circle around it. Don't go lose it. Anybody ever ask you, what is the greatest promise in the Bible? Just open up, read it to them. That, that when you've got it all, you've got it all. You don't need any more. You've got it all. And, and so inheriting, owning all things is owning all things. And so uh, there, are good days, <laughs> there are good days ahead for all of us. And all the people said, but then in, in the verse 8 right next to it, right, right below it, it's kind of terrifying. It says, but, now, now these, some of these are little three-letter words and two-letter words, they, they get me down, you know. That word, if, it's an abomination, you know. If it be true, you know. It just, it just has nothing positive about if. And this word, but, you can get it, but, you know. It's, a, it's an offbeat word. I don't like it at all. But anyway, it's here, so we better read it. But the fearful, you can't imagine the people that the Lord has helped me to cast fear out of them. I mean to say to fear, come out. Uh, and, uh, and, they are, and they are set free. If you're fearful about something, that part of you, God, is not there. Because God is not fearful. God is faith. And faith and fear don't live in the same box. They just don't live there. Whether it's your box or somebody else's box. They don't live in the same place. That thing where which you are fearful, God is not there. <clears throat> God, God wants us to, uh, uh, to have faith, to trust, uh, to believe, and, and to stay right with it. And all the people said... But the fearful, boy, what a bunch of people to live with. The unbelieving. No, no. <clears throat> just like a fear is a spirit. You say, well, what, where did you get that at? The Bible. The Bible says God did not give you the spirit of fear, so the devil gave it to you. And then it says, and the unbelieving. Now, unbelieving means that you see it, but you don't believe it. You see a person get healed, you say, oh, they weren't sick. You, 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 you see God do mighty things, oh, well, it just happened. And, and so you're the unbelieving. You just say, no, it's not real. I don't accept it. I don't believe it. And so you refuse to accept facts. And you refuse to accept truth. And, and, and because of that, God says you are an unbelieving person. Unbelieving has to be a spirit, a demon spirit. Uh, there are people that grow up in an atmosphere, just like we have today, and they don't believe. They, they hear it, but they don't believe it, you see. There has to be a spirit of believing in us to say, hey, I believe that. Not only do I hear it, I believe it, you see. And God wants us to be believers. And all the people said, 
And so he said, there are those who are fearful. They don't trust God. And they're unbelieving. They don't accept truth nor facts. And, and he says, and there are those that are the abominable. And that means they're so unclean, they're like an animal. It's so filthy, morally, spiritually. They're an abomination to God. And he says that there's a people that I call the abominable ones. They, they just, they just inside, outside, top side, bottom side, they don't live right. They don't live clean. They don't live pure. The, the imagination is full of impurities. That everything they think has to do uh, with that which is corrupt and will destroy your position and place in heaven. He says, the abominable. Then he says, and murderers. Now, that's the last book in the Bible. And next to the last chapter, we got one more chapter. These two chapters will become one chapter. We'll just keep plowing away till we get through both of them. What's it going to happen to the fearful and the unbelievers, the unbelievers and the abominable and the murderers? Well, he wants to add a few more to them uh, for you. It's wrong to take a life. Now, the way not to take a life is don't have an instrument that will take it away. I've told you before that I've had one gun in my life. My mother never permitted a gun in our house, so there was no gun as I grew up. Uh, and uh, I had a, a man that uh, was a jewelry manufacturer, and he said, I'd like to give you a gun. Uh, what for? Well, he says, you could shoot squirrels with it. Oh, I wouldn't hurt a little squirrel. I just love their tail. Uh, I wouldn't shoot a squirrel. What do you mean? Well, you could shoot a rabbit. Oh, I couldn't shoot a rabbit. He has a pretty tail, too. <laughs> and they shoot a bird. Oh, I couldn't shoot a bird. They got a pretty tail. <laughs> you know. But he gave me a 22 automatic rifle with, that shot the long bullets like this. And... and uh, I looked at that a few times and I said, you know, I don't want that thing around me. It don't, it, don't, it don't look like a blessing to look at. And it never healed anybody, you know, never blessed anybody. So I found a man that was a hunter, a Christian man. I said, would you like to have another gun? And he says, well, yes, I would. I said, I don't want any money for it. This is not a commercial deal. It may, this thing may have cost a lot of money, but I, I, I don't want any money for it. I just want to give it to you to, just to get it out of my way. And, 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 and so I, I gave him the gun. We hadn't had one since uh, at my house. So I don't, uh, if, if you, you know, parents that put a loaded gun where a child can get it, you're the one that ought to go to jail, really, not the kid. Oh, yeah, you are powerful today. You're powerfully silent. You have no business put, putting an instrument of death near a four, five, six, seven, eight-year-old kid. They don't know what it means. They see moving pictures, and they think they, it's all funny to shoot somebody. And, and so they're leaning towards shooting somebody anyway, then you give them the instrument, you're to blame for it. You leave it where they can get their hands on it. And, uh, and so if you do have a gun, it ought to be under lock and key, and the key ought to be in your pocket, by the way. And you shouldn't keep it loaded. You'll always have time to load it if you need it. Boy, this is going over big, isn't it? I tell you, <laughs> the applause almost knocks me off the platform, you know? Yeah. Oh, you say, well, you don't belong to the Rifle Association. I belong to Jesus, buddy, and that's it. I don't belong to anything else but Jesus. I'm not a member of anything. You name it, and I'm not a member of it. I'm a member of the body of Christ, and that is it. And, 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 and so uh, don't, don't think I'm leaning one way or the other way. I'm just, I'm just, uh, 
I, I just a lonely cowboy riding across the plains. <clears throat> but uh, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't belong to anything except you. I belong to you, and I belong to Jesus, and that's it. And that's it, you see. If you kick me out, I have to leave, and uh, if Jesus kicks me out, I, I, anyway. <clears throat> murderers. What's going to happen to murderers? We're going to tell you now what's going to happen to murderers. Murderers, but they're thrown in with the whoremongers. Whoremongers. This, this means that a woman wants to sell her body for a certain price, and you as a stranger, you're willing to pay for that. You can go to countries like Italy. We had an orphanage that we supported there for many years in, in close to Rome, and when I'd go out there, down the highway, they were about 10 miles out of town, down the highway would be a, a lady, a woman, sitting in a chair right here with a little, little cabin behind her there. And she would be sewing or knitting. And then two minutes later in the car, there'd be another one and then another one. And I said, boy, those are our busy women, aren't they? And the driver thought I knew what it was, and he said, yeah, they're busy. Well, I said, it's strange to me. They're, they're sitting out there in that chair. No, he says, that's not strange. When the men drive by here, uh, they look up a little bit, and they're available. And she's a whore. And he goes and lays with her and gives her 10 bucks or 20 bucks. And, and uh, he likes it, and on his way back into town, he does it all over again. He is a whore monger. And if you're just going to be like an animal and, and, and commit adultery, you're going to go to hell. Are you here? Amen. You're just going to go to hell. There's going to be a lot of our kin folks in hell. They don't live right. And if you don't live right, you're not going to go to heaven. The pure in heart shall see God. Nobody else, just the pure in heart. So if your heart's not pure, you're not going to see him. And all the people said? It says, they're the whoremongers. Then the sorcerers. Our world has more demon-activated cults at this moment than at any point in history. It is more occult-minded right now. In this city here, they have all kinds of occult meetings. Very few, very few churches advertise anymore in the local newspaper, but the occult does on Saturday. There, there are ads in there, you see. And if you want to worship the devil, just come over and over. It says, we, we'll, we'll help you. We'll help you to do that. Sorcerers who loan themselves not to God, but they loan themselves over to ungodliness and wickedness, you see. Now, these are the things you better stay away from. Or you're not going to make it to heaven. That's a start off with that word, but. <clears throat> Can you imagine that fear and sorcery, they go to the same place? And the whoremonger and the unbeliever all headed for the same eternal dwelling place. God means for us to fully clean ourselves up and not to halfway clean ourselves up. And then he says, and idolaters, and uh, there are those who worship this and worship that, worship the house, worship the job, uh, worship the car, they, they, that comes before God, and they take care of that before they take care of anything God-wise. And in pagan countries, of course, it means those idols that they worship there. And he says, and all liars, uh, you, you, you know, um, you have to have lying cast out of you. Are you here? Amen. Uh, 
children are the biggest liars in the world. A little boy comes walking in the house and says, Mama, there's a lion in the front yard. Mama says, son, there's no lion in our front yard. Oh, yes, there is. I tell you, he's a big lion. Son, there's no lion in the front yard. Yes, there is. I just left the front yard and there's a lion in our front yard. She said, you go talk to Jesus about this. He goes in the bedroom, stays a few minutes, comes back. Mama says, well, what did Jesus say? Well, Jesus said he thought it was a lion the first time he saw it. <laughs> now, you professional liars couldn't do much better than that, you know. And so that untruth has to be cast out of people. Or you'll be lying about income taxes, and you'll be lying about this and that and the other. And uh, it says all liars. It don't. You say, oh, I want to tell white lies. Well, he brought you in here too. Yeah. All liars, they shall have their part. Now we got to that but, you see. In the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second and last separation from the almighty God, second death. Death means you cease to be what you were. And, and so it's, your, it's the last one, the second one, the first one. You, you die and you go to hell. Then there comes the great white throne judgment. You're resurrected in order to prove you're where you should be. Then you're put into the second death, which has no termination to it uh, whatsoever. The, the New Jerusalem consists of the saints of all ages and the bride of Christ. That's in verse 9. And there came unto me one of seven angels, which had the seven vials of the, of the seven last plagues. And he talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. That's us, the bride of Christ. He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me <laughs> that great city, the holy Jerusalem, only holy city ever on planet earth. And it was descending out of heaven from God. It is the only holy city this earth has ever known. And you and I will use that as our residence forever and forever. It's our long home. And we're going to live there with Jesus Christ as he sits upon his throne and the Father sits upon his throne and the Holy Ghost sits upon his throne. We're going to live there and a city bigger than the continent of Europe and 1,500 miles high, the Bible says. We're going to live there forever and forever. Now, anybody that would accept the filth of iniquity and not accept the holiness of the Almighty, there's something wrong with your ticker. How could a person swap off billions in treasure for two cents just because it purchased a little lemonade about that much? This world is selling out mighty cheap. Church members are selling out mighty cheap. There are millions of church members that are not going to heaven they don't live right. Being a church member is not a guarantee. The blood of Jesus Christ is a guarantee. His blood cleanses us from all our sin. And those whose sins are forgiven can live with him forever. How many want to live with him forever? Yeah. Aren't you glad the Bible concluded in this manner? Better than any novel you ever read in your life, you know. 
Then at the end of things, there's a separation of the godly from the ungodly. And that those that hated evil, you'll never see them again. And those that love righteousness, you'll live with them forever. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Father, bless thy word to all of our hearts. And help us, Lord, to walk in the ways of God's righteousness. I believe you to do it. Bless thy people, Lord. And help every one of us to meet on the golden strands of the new Jerusalem to live with all of those that love God forever and forever. And all the people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. Amen. Bless you.